Okay, we will go ahead and get started. Welcome to today's Lunch and Learn presented by Virginia Community Capital. I am Melody Short, Community Innovation Advisor, and I'm excited to have you join us all today to learn more about VCC's Virginia Fresh Food Loan Fund um, and learn about federal, state, and local funding resources for food-based businesses in our region. I'm super excited again to have you gather with us. Before we continue, just a few housekeeping rules. We are recording the webinar and we will send the link to all that registered next week. If you have questions, please submit those questions via the chat feature located in the toolbar. Um, don't submit via the Q&A box. We will scroll and just pull the questions for you. Um, and don't wanna delay this. I typically go over our, our Virginia Community Capital Loan for Economic um, fun with uh, you all at the beginning, but I'll hold that until the end because I think it's nice to introduce our first speak our speaker for this, this session, um, Lauren D. Simone. She is the Food System Financing Advisor for Virginia Community Capital. So, Lauren, you can take the floor and share this incredible resource uh, with our guest today. Thank you, Melody. Hello, all. I'm going to attempt to share my screen with you. Can you confirm you see that melody? I see it. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so I'm gonna spend the first few moments uh, with slides that give you an overview of VCC. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with VCC. Um, these are all information um, tidbits that are available on our website. So I'm not gonna spend too much time, but I just wanna make sure that you're oriented to uh, the work of VCC. We are a CDFI, a community development financial institution, um, and we serve low to moderate income communities with five, focus, this is our VCC bank, uh, with five focus areas that include the healthy food financing program that I'm at the helm of, uh, affordable housing, healthcare, clean energy, and general small business development. And I think Melody will touch a little bit more on our small business development and in particular, the economic equity fund that we have uh, at the end of the presentation today. Um, I'm mentioning our products and services on the lending side. We also have arms of VCC that serve advisory um, interests as well as investing. You can see a little bit more of our uh, focus areas and some of the metrics that we use to measure success in our communities. We are a statewide, um, we have a statewide footprint. We have offices in Christiansburg, Richmond, and Norfolk. I'm in Richmond, but my, um, the Healthy Food Financing Program serves the entire state of Virginia. Here are some more metrics on our social impact. Again, all of this information is available on our website. And that is um, the gloss over of, of what who VCC is and brings me to the Virginia Fresh Food Loan Fund. Um, the Virginia Fresh Food Loan Fund or the FFLF for short, short is a revolving loan fund. Um, it started back in 2013 with a primary focus on healthy corner store interventions and investments. Um, as well, the $10 million that seeded the revolving loan fund came um, in part from our VCC portfolio, as well as the Federal um, Department of Treasury's Healthy Food Financing Initiative. And that is a federal grant that we continue to receive that enables us to offer this program to our communities across the Commonwealth. Ultimately, the First Food Loan Fund's mission is to increase access to healthy food um, by providing both the financial products, but also the technical assistance that goes with those projects to increase the capital absorption capacity. So whether there is a loan that is financed or a grant given, we wanna make sure that our partners, our projects, the business owners and organization leads are able to um, absorb that influx of money and are able to sustain whatever growth that affords them. So I might be biased because my focus is food, but I think that, that the interest and the, the need for ensuring healthy food access is a pivotal point of every community. And that is in line with VCC's mission of ensuring that we're contributing to the thriving communities of um, Virginia, um, of, of neighborhoods and communities of Virginia. Um, in particular, we are looking at healthy food access through a financial lens. 
So really looking at how and where and what are those financial resources um, that support the vitality and the vibrancy of food-based businesses across the Commonwealth. And that, our work, our, our mission in terms of healthy food financing, um, it can look a few different, like a few different things. Um, so in particular, we work directly with businesses to offer capital. The healthy food financing initiative that I mentioned allows us to um, provide both credit and collateral enhancements for food-based borrowers. So uh, we can lower interest rates for borrowers, we also are able to provide a loan loss reserve. So if there are um, you know, more risks associated with the project or perhaps it's a new business, it doesn't have a, a significant cash flow history, we're able to pull in some of our collateral enhancements, what we call them, um, so that we can make up some of the, the shortfall in that collateral and provide some risk mitigants so that we're able to approve loans that maybe a traditional bank might not. We also, through our technical assistance arm, are able to come in and, and really help with some of the pre-development costs associated with a project. Um, and that can look like feasibility studies, energy audits, um, general business development or financial literacy training for business owners. Uh, it can also uh, support nonprofits um, and some of the engagement work that they're doing with their programs or services. Um, and that's our work that we do um, directly kind of on a one-on-one -on -one basis with individual businesses and organizations and communities. But we also play a role in the greater statewide food system. Um, we wear the hat of supporting the Virginia Food Access Investment Fund, which is a new program that was started back in 2020 was when it was enacted. Um, it's housed at the Department of Ag and Consumer Services. Uh, and it is right now a grant program that provides up to $50,000 grants to food-based retail businesses. Um, so it's, it's all about trying to increase access to healthy food through a retail component, uh, as well as to expand the SNAP EBT infrastructure. So not only providing the access through the retailers, but also the nutrition incentive program um, through SNAP, and then also the Virginia Fresh Match program, which is a double bucks program for SNAP EBT recipients. So they can go to the grocery store uh, or the corner market, and they can purchase $10 worth of produce and they end up getting $20 actually with that fresh match double Brooks program. So VCC is the contracted CDFI to support that food access investment fund. We provide technical assistance to all the grant applicants and helping them apply for those grants. And then if an applicant is awarded that grant, we provide the kind of back end support to ensure um, that they have all the tools and resources they need to, to sustain the, the grant, their business, and ultimately their service to the community. We also wear the hat of supporting the facilitation of the Virginia Good Food Fund. And I have a little bit of um, information at the end of my slideshow today to let you know about what that is, but that's really an effort to coordinate the food system funders, as well as the service providers, so that we have kind of a one-stop shop way to provide resources to communities. Uh, it can be really um, intimidating to try to navigate grant writing or you know, talking to a banker about a loan or even knowing if the loan is something that you wanna pursue and all the different you know, services and, and other kind of technical assistance knowledge that goes with that. And so the Virginia Good Food Fund is envisioned to leverage the expertise of all the different players and stakeholders of the food system in Virginia and make that access more accessible um, to those that are interested. So thinking about the food system through a financial lens, um, I often talk about the work that we do is creating an enabling environment. It's it's behooves me, it's you know my responsibility to be a good steward of the resources at VCC and also the steward of interests of the community to ensure that this is a right decision for anyone involved, whether it's a grant they're someone's writing or applying for, uh, or it's a loan that eventually you know is is financing through VCC or a partner bank. Um, and there are, there are steps that, that are involved in ensuring that that flow of um, need and interest are aligned. So in my experience- Lauren, I'm, a, I'm sorry to cut across you. Your screen is pro, so the, the slides are not advancing. Uh-oh, where are you in a slide? The main one still. Oh, all oh. of these are not advancing. Yeah, let me see if Jake can- 
jump in and help. Hmm. I, there's all advancing on my slides or on my screen. Um, maybe pull it out and then. Like stop sharing and start it again? Yeah. I'm sorry, I was on like slide 12. And I'm sorry, I didn't catch it. No, you're good. Do you see the Virginia? Yeah, picture? can you put it can you put it in presentation mode? Let me see. Okay. Is it not Jake. already? Um no, Jake is saying that he could jump in if needed to help. Are they advancing? Nope. If I don't do the slideshow mode. Do you see it advancing now? No. Hmm. Okay. Let's see here. I can't see what anything Jake's saying if it. Yeah, see so can jump in. Maybe send it to Jake and then Jake can share. We apologize everybody. Sometimes the tech is not our friend. Okay, hold on, okay. I'll just oh. send it to Jake and see if he can. Okay, I just sent it to both of you, if you're able to see that. Melody, you're, you're on mute. Sorry, Laverne, yes, we can share the slides as well, um, along with the recording. But let's see if Jake... Okay, so Jake will... Um, under Valerie's name, we'll share his screen. He's downloading it now. Are there any questions that I know that you haven't had slides to go along with, but from anything that I've said, are there any questions that have come up? We're just getting, we're just getting into it, into the meat of it. <laughs> I think this is a good time for everyone to use the bathroom and maybe get some food for lunch if you don't already have it. <laughs> you know what? I'm actually going to use this time to share. Oh, there we go. There we go. And what slot would you need to um, be on, Lauren? Um. Jake, if you could go to slide number 12, the path towards building economic resiliency. There you go. Hi, Victoria. <laughs> Did you want to say anything? Because yeah, you can continue, that's fine. 
Um, so I was talking about thinking about the food system through a financing lens um, and what that entails. So I talk a lot about creating an enabling environment, which is my role um, by connecting the, the need for resources with those resources. Um, and often there is kind of like a stepping stone or a ladder towards um, that kind of profound systemic change that we're trying to affect in the food system to ensure um, healthier food access for our community members. So that stepping stone looks like pre-development support for projects that could be in the form of um, a, or I'm sorry, a grant that we provide to a business or an organization, maybe it's a site selection study for a possible grocery store location. It could be a feasibility study for expanding a food hub. Um, we've worked with cities and municipal leaders to have them fund um, a pro forma um, template that was made for assessing um, the viability potential of various stores that the, the city could invest in or provide resources for. There's a whole host of ways that we can support um, communities and projects. Uh, but that pre-development phase can take quite a long time. Um, often I, I say that it could be two, three years of this support of the work of the various studies and assessments before there might be actually breaking ground or having that project or business actually open or finally expand or whatever their intent is in the interest of improving healthy food access. Um, so a lot of the work I do is spent in that pre-development phase. Ultimately, we involve... We, and, we, and ideally we involve community residents because there's a lot that could be good intention with all of the organizational stakeholders at the table who come together to support a healthy food access project. But we wanna make sure that that intention is actually beneficial to the community. And it's so important that we're including those community voices and, and helping to shape or, or decide um, things for a project that is truly reflective of the community need. Um, you might hear about grocery stores closing um, and that being a contributor to a, a place where there's a food insecure, where there is a place with food insecurity. Um, those grocery stores are often closing because there's not a good connection to what the community residents need or want. Um, and it, it's harder, obviously, if there's a, a larger store such as a, a Kroger or a Publix. Um, but a lot of the success of a food-based project for increasing healthy food access is really dependent on that community engagement uh, and that voice being amplified and, and part of the decision making. Um, ideally, again, we're providing stipends. So we have um, in our um, kind of toolbox at VCC some funds that we're able to provide to engage residents and really honor their expertise as being, um, you know, the, the knowledge of the community. And so stip community stipends are often something that um, can be used as a tool in that pre-development phase. We also then look at how to jumpstart activity. And that is often in the form of grants before loans. And that is why our partnership with VDAX, the Department of Ag and Consumer Services and the Virginia Food Access Investment Fund is so important because often we're able to, um, we're able to work with those grant recipients where they are in that kind of life cycle of their project and help them get to the point where they can, you know, scale the grant impact, maybe, you know, $25,000 or $50,000 to expand their store footprint um, by buying or, or updating their refrigerators and their freezers so that they can take on new healthy produce or frozen goods or dairy products. Um, and then they might actually get to the point where they can expand the whole store footprint. And that might be when it's time to talk about financing with a loan for construction or whatever it might be. So those catalytic grants are so important, um, not to mention that they're not you know, financing, so it, there's no payback necessary, uh, which is also helpful for a smaller uh, business or a newer business. And then eventually we do get into the financing world or realm, I should say. Uh, and that too, in my experience so far, that requires what we call in the in the lingo of, of the CDFI world a capital stack, or a pie that come that is made up of a lot of different slices of funding sources. Um, in my experience with VCC, which has been about, I realized I didn't even introduce myself. I'm sorry. Uh, my experience with VCC, which has been about four and a half years, 
every single food-based project that I've worked on has come with a creative and very diverse capital stack where the financing piece might be a small minority, but then there are also federal and state or even local grants that are part of that, as well as um, you know, investment from the business owner or from maybe a foundation or a philanthropic partner. So in short, when we actually get into bigger dollar projects, and or financing, talking about financing, almost always my role is to kind of broker the relationships uh, between area foundations or other folks who have an interest in the, in the social impact side of the project, as well as the economic de development side with the maybe local economic development authority. Um, and my role is to help you know, navigate those conversations, navigate or translate what all of that means to everyone who might not have that expertise. Uh, and also, of course, identify the funding sources, especially if they're grants. Um, and then, like I said, we have our v Virginia Fresh Food Loan Fund, which um, enables VCC to be able to finance loans that come with some advantages. So like I mentioned earlier, um, our Fresh Food Loan Fund enables us to offer loans at a lower interest rate. And also we ha have a loan loss reserve, like I mentioned, that enables us to use that for a collateral enhancement to mitigate risk, which just makes that capital a little bit more accessible to, to businesses or organizations um, for a variety of reasons. And we can talk about that later. And then ultimately, and this is our, our last kind of stepping stone, but the most important is that VCC, myself, some of my colleagues have invested in a business and in a community through our relationship and our support long after any sort of transaction occurs. So whether there's a pre-development technical assistance grant, maybe it's a VFAFE, the Food Access Investment Fund grant that a, a business has been awarded, uh, or maybe there's a loan that, that has been uh, closed between VCC and a business. The most important aspect of all of this is the relationship that we have and that we sustain with that business, with that community, so that we are able to, um, you know, be, basically be the eyes and the ears of what those needs of the business are, ultimately what the needs of the community members are, and that VCC or our partners are able to step in um, and, and provide the services in the, you know, kind of next level or scaled up version of what that business organization needs to continue to provide that healthy food access to their community. I'm gonna move on here, or next slide. I forgot, I don't have the, the access to that, Jake. <clears throat> so this is a really great example of um, kind of the, the very multi-layered and complex uh, capital stack or um, flow of, of support financially that goes into a community. Um, and this is my attempt to illustrate kind of like an ecosystem of support or that enabling environment that I mentioned earlier. So this is an example in Hampton Roads right now. Um, in particular in, in the Norfolk area, um, where it's involving certain sources of, of financial support. I've seen some, some chatter or questions about the catalytic grants, so we can talk about that during the Q&A. But in the green kind of arrow that you see where there's that big dollar sign, this is representing the influx of money and where those funding sources are coming from uh, to support the businesses and organizations that you see on the right side of the slide. So and essentially, in Hampton Roads, the St. Paul's Community Development Corporation um, there in the St. Paul's neighborhood has, in their nonprofit, they have been kind of spearheading a lot of the healthy food access support along with several other organizations and stakeholders in that area um, to tackle the lack of resources, the lack of retailers, the lack of services in general um, that this community is, is dealing with in terms of their own like health and wealth um, or health and well-being, I should say. So the St. Paul's Development Corporation uh, has been working with VCC for, for two, three years now in that pre-development phase. We funded a technical assistance grant to support a feasibility study for looking at various site locations for a corner store to be put in and supported with healthy food um, purchasing so that they could sell that to the community members. Um, the St. Paul's Community Development Corporation. And I realize, I'm sorry, in my um, making of these slides, a, a logo was left off, but there's actually another organization, another nonprofit called Youth Earn and Learn. Um, the two of those organizations were grant recipients of the VFAFE Award, that Food Access Investment Fund Award from the Department of Ag and Consumer Services. So you'll see on the left side of my slide that um, you know, funding source. 
So those two organizations were recipients, each of $50,000 in the Norfolk area. Youth Earn and Learn provides um, after school jobs for youth selling healthy food to various locations. So whether it's at a senior citizen home, um, certain events, et cetera, um, Karen Bailey is their executive director. She's done a fantastic job of connecting um, wealth building opportunities for youth with healthy food access and that kind of social and health um, impact opportunity. These two organizations actually leverage their independent grants together with additional funding from other foundations. I think Truist was another funding source, United Healthcare, um, and they actually together with that those additional leverage dollars created a brand new program, which is the food pharmacy program at the bottom corner of my slide. Um, that, excuse me, that is a program, if you're not familiar with Produce RX or food pharmacy programs, it actually is a prescribed um, medicine from a doctor to a, a patient or a, a community member for health related medical issues to get healthy produce as part of their treatment to improve whatever ailments they might have, whether it's diabetes or something like that. So these two nonprofit organizations created their own new program, this food pharmacy program for a senior housing um, residents so that those senior housing residents could actually use their insurance and their um, you know, financial medical resources to receive healthy food. That's really amazing. Meanwhile, Park Avenue Market that you see there is actually a small corner store that has been um, in talks with the St. Paul's Community Development Corporation about actually receiving some of the produce that this corporation can buy um, from the VFAFE grant. One of the conditions of the VFAFE grant is that all recipients must source local Virginia grown produce, about 25% of their, of their total produce sourcing. So Park Avenue Market has now engaged with St. Paul's Development Corporation um, to actually house or sell healthy produce, produce at their store and has since worked with VCC uh, and talked about maybe some financing to expand their footprint and add additional refrigerators and coolers so that even more inventory can be sold that is healthy, both dairy, meat, and then the, the fresh produce um, as well. Uh, the Park Avenue Market serves as a hub for the food pharmacy program for all the aggregation of the produce, the packaging, and then distributing it out to the senior residents. So you have suddenly on the left side, you know, a combination of pre-development, technical assistance, you have catalytic grants through the VFAF program, you have the Fresh Match program, which enables the, the shoppers at the Park Avenue market to double their bucks or get double the produce for their dollar. You have other foundations and other grant sources involved all coming together to support what the St. Paul's Community Development Corporation calls the Norfolk food ecosystem. And this is just a really lovely, in my opinion, really lovely example of how important it is to be creative with funding sources and how to leverage additional and, and, and diverse funding sources to possibly create a brand new opportunity for community residents. And it's a mixture of nonprofits, it's a mixture of, you know, for-profit businesses, it's, it's, you know, housing facilities, it's, of course, all of the organizations providing the financial um, resources. It's just a really lovely way to kind of imagine what's possible when you start to think about um, healthy food access from a systems perspective and also through the lens of, of financial resources. Can you advance to the next slide? So I have some photos on the next two slides to show you. Um, so on the left is the St. Paul's Community Development Corporation at the beginning of COVID, uh, before any of this happened, uh, the, the example I just gave you, um, they were a, a big um, critical source for moving fresh produce in and out of the community there. This is a community that had a grocery store close in the last couple of years, have had no access to healthy food retail uh, in terms of a grocery store in a few years. And so the St. Paul CDC was procuring local produce and making sure that it got into the hands and the, and the homes and the bellies of their residents um, in early COVID. And then throughout COVID, um, that's when this Food Access Investment Fund was enacted in the General Assembly back in 2020. Um, 
St. Paul CDC started working with the Park Avenue market that you see there, as I mentioned, to start offering more fresh produce. And now that market has since committed to expanding their, their size and increasing their storage, their cold storage capacity. So even more fresh produce can be sold as well as being the home for that the food pharmacy program. Uh, next slide, please. And then on the left, that food pharmacy program that I mentioned is from the, uh, you know, the collaboration of St. Paul CDC and Youth Earn and Learn. So this is an example of, of one of Youth Earn and Learn's pop-up markets where they're selling food at an event uh, with the youth engaged in their, in their programs. And then on the right there, um, you can see in the background, there's a, actually, I think a Bon Secours like health, mobile health clinic. Um, and that table is, is kind of promoting or, or um, you know, serving as an access point for the food pharmacy program. You can see the logo there, the St. Paul CDC um, logo as well, the, the more importantly, the basket of, of fresh food. Um, and that's an event at a senior housing um, facility, again, partnered with other stakeholder partner, uh, resources like the, the mobile health clinic. Uh, and other folks to really make sure that all social determinants of health as best as, as they can um, are, being, are being addressed on site and within access of those residents. Next slide. Um, so Melly, I'm gonna maybe, I don't know how much time I have left, but I have a few more slides just to kind of reiterate the interest or the, the I guess, impacts potential of the Good Food Fund. Is that okay if I have like five more minutes? Absolutely. And then I will take, I know some of what, uh, some of the questions you've actually covered, but I'm going to loop back and still want to make sure I ask all the questions that have been shared. And then we can just address just in case folks miss some of the information. Okay. All right. Next slide, please. So the Good Food Fund um, is pretty nascent still in its development. Um, it is a result of VCC about four or five years ago when I actually came on board um, to support this food financing program. We engaged the Food Trust, which is a national thought leader out of Philadelphia, to come into, um, not come in, but like virtually, you know, come into Virginia and take a look at what is the food financing landscape here in our Commonwealth. And then more importantly, what is the role of VCC as a CDFI and one of the only in Virginia that has a food financing program, uh, what is its role in that food financing landscape? And what ultimately was, was um, re not revealed, but I guess further emphasized is that VCC is not a food system expert or even a food access expert. We do well um, providing financing to low and moderate income communities. We do well as a mission lender, lending the, the social impact uh, interests that we have with our financial resources and products. Um, and altogether, it, it re-emphasized that for VCC to be the best steward of the resources that we have for our food system financing program, which is the Virginia Fresh Food, food Loan Fund, we need to really rely on and more importantly collaborate with and coordinate our peers in the food system space and the food access space who do that work really well, our service provider partners, um, you know, our thought leaders, our, our policy advocates, and, and really make sure that our, our network that we can coordinate is um, you know, enabling everyone to do their best within their kind of realm of expertise, but not asking anyone to stretch over uh, kind of their lanes into other territories that they might not be as well first in. So all of this kind of amounted to VCC being at the helm of and still, you know, trying to get started what we're calling the Virginia Good Food Fund, which is modeled after several other states' good food funds. There's one in Michigan that we've been very closely, um, you know, researching. California has one. The very first is in Pennsylvania, Vermont. Um, and essentially a good food fund is a connected or, or networked coalition of both funders who have um, resources in the food financing space, as well as the service providers who can be tapped to support uh, projects, businesses, communities with their technical assistance or, you know, with their services and programs. And all of this is to ensure that we're building a resilient local food system that ultimately that local food system contributes to healthier food access, that we're supporting the health of our community, and ultimately through that developing economic development or developing a local food economy that yields more economic development opportunities. Um, so in short, we're building the health and wealth of communities through food system investments. And that takes a village. <laughs> um, and that's why we're all here. But that is the vision of the Good Food Fund. And um, in other states, that Good Food Fund has 
um, been created with the partnership of several different players, including the state government, um, some major philanthropic foundations have supported the creation of good food funds in other states. Um, certainly CDFIs have been involved, healthcare systems have been involved. So we're still, again, in our early stages of identifying all those different um, players and supporters to get the Good Food Fund in Virginia really some legs underneath of it. But we've also accomplished a lot in the time that we've um, been having these coordinated or networked conversations with, with our, our peer stakeholders. And so if you can go to the next slide, I'll give you an idea of, of who they are and kind of what we're able to, to tackle. Next slide, Jake, there we go. So um, we have a really extensive partner list uh, of folks that have been at the table or at various tables and having various conversations about what this idea is and what it could be. And again, we have a lot more work to do to really hone in on what our mission, vision and values are before we actually are a tactical or, or functional uh, fund. But these are just a, a few of the partners that have been a part of the regular conversations that we've had, everything kind of was put on pause because of COVID and, and really directing, you know, the focus and attention on the immediate relief um, needs that, that occurred because of COVID. But now we're able to kind of claw our way back a little bit in our in our kind of COVID recovery period to reevaluate what this could be in Virginia, especially given the, the problems that COVID has illuminated in the food system. Next slide, please. Um, and so, if you were to put all of these folks in a room who've had conversations about the Good Food Fund, you can see here that they represent so many different communities, communities of practice, geographic communities, you know, business sectors, service provider sectors, it's quite impressive. Um, and ultimately have major spheres of influence that can affect policy interests, can affect you know, financial act, equitable financial access, uh, can affect what kids are eating at school, you know, what kids are bringing home from school if they don't have um, you know, adequate feeding or access to food at home. Um, you know, there's a whole host of, of opportunities here that these coalition members can represent, not can, that they do represent, and that could um, you know, be all the more improved with intentional and, and thoughtful development of this good food fund. And then of course the financial resources that could come with that. Um, and so I think that's my last slide. This is a very high level um, overview of this good food fund that's pretty nascent, but it's um, I think something that's worth sharing and, and letting you all know about, because again, at the very least, my role with VCC is, is for you if you have interests in any one of these kind of sectors or categories um, or opportunities as well or resources to share, you know, that you can give me a call. And I like to say that my, my best role is that I'm an air traffic controller. Um, so I do my best to wrap my arms around the needs in Virginia in terms of healthy food access, as well as just the general food system development. Um, and I do my best to, to kind of be the matchmaker between what those needs are and what the resources are and bring them together. Uh, and VCC really can play kind of like a Switzerland role and being quite a neutral party at the table to help navigate or facilitate conversations among municipal leaders and boards of supervisors and school superintendents, as well as you know, food-based businesses and food hubs that are aggregating produce and farmers. Um, government entities you know, in terms of the advocacy side of things. And so in short, as I tell my colleagues, if it has to do with food, give me a call. Um, if it's not gonna be me or, or VCC as the best resource for you, I do my best to make sure I know who those folks are and to, to make sure that that connection is made. Um, and the, excuse me, in the end, it's called a food system for a reason, right? It, it, it takes the, the village, it takes the system of, of resources and of folks to come together um, to make sure that that all the different, um, you know, assets and opportunities are going where they need to go um, to serve to serve our neighbors and our community members. And so um, in closing, um, don't hesitate to give me a call and I will do my best to connect you to the resources that we have for you. Thanks so much, Lauren, uh, for providing us with such valuable information. Um, and the details related to VCC's Virginia Fresh Food Fund loan, um, loan fund, I'm sorry, and learn about just the additional resources provided through federal, state, um, and local government for food-based businesses in our region. We do have questions.
typically encourage um, attendees to not be shy. So I'm happy that we do have questions that have already started to come through the pipeline. And so I will start with um, the first question. I'm gonna go to Q and A. Um, okay. Excuse me. Can you share That's a note it. about? Thank you. Can you share a note about um, community stipends, amounts, and expectations? And I know you did touch on it, but if you can um, just share, expand a little bit more, just so that, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, and that's really like a. It's not a one size fits all. It does definitely requires reflection on who the community is. You know how. Um, what's the duration of that engagement? Um, but in, I can just give an example. Um, so I actually am, I live in Richmond and, and though the VCC kind of service area is the, is the whole state, um, I and Richmond are am a part of the Northside Food Access Coalition, which is kind of a, an organic um, coordinated group of, of residents who have come together to advocate for better food access options in the North side of Richmond. I, I really wear a volunteer hat. Um, and, and it's in my own backyard in Richmond, so that's why I'm involved in that. But this coalition, uh, they applied for one of the VFAF awards and were awarded a VFAF grant last year in the inaugural round of $50,000. And that is to start a farmer's market, CSA share, like kind of hybrid, um, in collaboration with Community High School in Richmond. Um, and that market is due to open next month, which is super exciting. But another half of that, grant that was awarded is exclusively allocated to hire a community food fellow. Um, so this is an example of a much longer term, kind of larger investment in a community stipend, but about 30 to $40,000 is set aside to hire, and we have hired, her name is Cheyenne, um, hire a community food fellow who is part farmer's market manager, but more importantly, part you know, community advocate and, and cheerleader and engager so that the needs and the interests of the community are a part of every decision made at the market, whether it's price point, types of produce sold, what the, you know, SNAP EPT and, and fresh match access points are um, as well. So for our next food fellow, when that person is hired, all of Cheyenne's knowledge, interest, work can be then transferred and that kind of institutional knowledge that's being built around the North side in terms of healthy food access is compounded by each food fellow that, that joins or other community residents that are part of the, the coalition. So that's a kind of a bigger example, but that's one where the state approved the, the grant budget. We have the money, we've hired the fellow and we're opening our market next, next uh, month. And I'm super excited that that's um, transpired. We started meeting four years ago. So it's about four years of effort that has gone into that, but I'm, I'm happy to share that. It's one example of a, of a stipend. And I'm happy to talk more kind of on a smaller scale individually, if you want to give me a call. That's super exciting, Lauren. Thank you for sharing that information. The next question is, how do you get information on a catalytic grants? And I know you touched on this as well, but if you can um, just share. Yeah, so if you're asking about it in general versus specifically, I, I can just speak right now in the interest of time specifically. So the Food Access Investment Fund is a significant resource. Um, it's up to $50,000 for a grant. It can go to nonprofits. It can go to businesses. Um, a very significant part of that program is that it aligns with the equitable food-oriented development framework. I'm proud to say that it's actually the only, we are only the only state in Virginia, I'm sorry, Virginia is the only state in the country to have some sort of state funded food access program that aligns with the EFOD or the Equitable Food Oriented Development Framework. So we've actually gotten calls from lots of other states who have asked, how do you do it in Virginia? How can we do it in New Mexico or Massachusetts or wherever else? Um, and that's one example of a catalytic grant. Also at VDAX is uh, the AFID program, which is Agriculture and Forestry Investment. I'm not sure what the D is. Um, but there are actually a planning um, AFID grant, a facility AFID grant, and an infrastructure AFID grant. And that goes to, if you can imagine, any aspect of the food system that has to do with planning a project, having a facility in the food system, or the infrastructure in the food system. Um, so those are both through the, the Department of Ag and Consumer Services. And I'm going to try to um, type out what the grants are here in the chat so y'all can see that too, and you can search for it.
Thank you, Lauren, for sharing. I have another question. This question is, do you or have you worked with Virginia Cooperative Extension um, in any of the projects um, that you've shared? Absolutely, yes. Cooperative Extension is a significant partner in all the kind of projects and sorts of things that you heard today. Uh, in particular, the Good Food Fund is, is one that we that they rep are represented there. Um, but also there are calls that we've had that are coordinating the Cooperative Extension's um, nutrition education uh, arm with the SNAP Ed agents so that we can combine the SNAP EBT um, approved vendors, the Virginia Fresh Match, which is that double bucks program, um, nutrition incentive program, and then also the Eat Smart, Shop Smart um, nutrition literacy or nutrition education program so that all of those resources are pulled together and, and are shared amongst us as practitioners so that if there's a store or a farmer's market that offer, <clears throat> that is, you know, SNAP EBT eligible that has Virginia Fresh Match to double the, the produce that could be bought, that there's also one of those SNAP ed agents from Proper Extension with the nutrition literacy there uh, to make sure that the, the, the customer is, is, you know, has any questions that are, that, if they have questions that those are answered about the produce and, and how to cook it at home or you know how to make choices based on certain diet needs etc uh, and that's just one small example of the many ways that we work with the cooperative extension agents thank you so much lauren um does anyone else have any other questions i've also included lauren's email address in the chat so feel free to grab that if you think of some other questions after we finish the session um, we encourage you to make contact with Lauren. She'll love to, I think it's, she'll love to hear from you. Um, and one more thing I'll, I'll share, Melody, is that right now, as I think we all have, have experienced, even just as being shoppers at a, a, a grocery store, whether there's no toilet paper in early pandemic days or now there's no chicken or beef, you know, there are significant disruptions to the supply, the global food supply chain because of COVID and other supply chains as well. Uh, and what it did though, it, it didn't break the food system. It just showed or further illuminated that the food system has already been broken and that it, it requires thoughtful, you know, investment in a regional resilient food system to kind of overcome some of those global supply chain barriers. And with that comes an unprecedented amount of funding, especially from the USDA, going down through states to local USDA offices or, you know, recipients of that money that I've never seen, nor people who are much older than me have ever seen before in terms of food system investment. And so, especially, you know, with CARES Act money or, or ARPA money, as well as now with, with the food system specific investments, there is a lot of money out there that everyone's trying to figure out how to absorb or how to, to get essentially. And so that's a lot of what I've been doing lately is helping various projects or, or you know, organizations, businesses say, I know that there's this great influx of money that might not ever happen again in our lifetime. How can we seize that and, and make the most of it? And so that's another um, kind of big and, and vague conversation that I'm having with folks now is, Let's help you write that USDA grant. Let's help you pair some of the new resources that are that have never existed before at a federal level with some of the local projects um, that you've been envisioning for a long time or that are already in existence that we, we want to scale up to really meet the needs of that regional, uh, you know, resilient local food system. So I can't emphasize enough that there's never been this much money invested in the food system, and it takes you, it takes us, you know, with our expertise and our ground truthing to say how can that you know, hundred dollars or hundred thousand or you know million dollars benefit our community the most in a sustainable way, and I'm happy to have those conversations with you and sort that out because that is definitely something that is um, it's timely, it's now, it's urgent, um, and it's it's unique because I think that it can really transform some of the work that we're doing in terms of healthy food access and investments in the food system. Thank you, Lauren, and I'm gonna give. Attendees, the opportunity um, to, if you want to ask a question before we wrap up. I'm actually not surprised that there are not a lot of questions because, Lauren, your presentation was so thorough. Um, so thank you. Um, so I'm just checking the chat just to say Victoria's Kitchen said this was good. I'm so happy she's on. Um, well, I am going to proceed again. Lauren's email address is in the chat box. So feel free if something comes to mind uh, after this session. 
I welcome you to, to reach out to Lauren. Um, we're hopeful that this uh, that you're leaving this lunch and learn feeling more empowered and confident, having more resources that you can access in your arsenal at Virginia Community Capital. We're excited to share information um, with you on the Economic Equity Loan Fund. Uh, and so for those who may not be familiar with this fund, in 2020, BCC deployed about uh, $10 million in loan funds that provides low-cost financing for small minority and women-owned businesses. Um, disproportionately affected by the economic impact of the pandemic. In addition to low interest loans for eligible borrowers, resources have been allocated to provide free technical assistance and consulting for eligible small businesses and community-based par um, partners. This year, we secured additional grant funding to uh, further support this program. And so we encourage all to learn more about the Economic Equity Fund by visiting us online at virginiacommunitycapital.org. I'll place a link in the chat. Um, click on uh, our impact and then Economic Equity Fund. I'll also include my email address in the chat if you have questions specifically about this loan fund. Um, but I encourage you, I know a few on the call, we, we have started to have conversations around it. This is uh, funding that's available um, to you as a small business owner, we want to make sure this funding gets out to small businesses. Um, I want to let me actually just place this in the chat now so that you have any questions. All right, so that's our website. And then if you have questions about the Economic Equity Fund, you can email me and we can schedule a call to get additional details. Um, again, I just want to thank each of you so much for your time. We welcome you to share with the small business community, our next virtual lunch and learn date, which will take place Wednesday, June 29th at 12 p.m. Um, during that session, we will focus on building credit 101 tips for the small business owner. And that session will be pre presented by Credit Restoration, the Credit Restoration Institute. So happy Thursday to you all. Have a wonderful holiday weekend. And we hope that you can join us next month for our May, our June edition of our virtual lunch and learns. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Bye.